So I was looking through one of my favorite geometry books today. So it's called Continuous Symmetry by William Barker and Roger Howe. And I thought maybe I wanted to do a proposition from this book. So this is kind of picked at random from the middle of the book and it's a fairly standard result. So you can find it a bunch of different places, but it also just gave me an opportunity to plug this really, really great book that I've used uh, to teach a class before. Okay, so it goes like this. So we wanna suppose that M and L are distinct lines intersecting at a point P Next, we will pick A on the line L, which is not equal to P, and C on the line M, which is not equal to P, and define the angle theta to be the angle measure of A, P, C. Then the result that we will prove is that if we do a reflection across the line L followed by a reflection across the line M, that's the same thing as a rotation based at point P of angle two theta. So I've just noted down here by sigma, I mean a reflection and by rho, I mean a rotation. So that's the notation that I'm using here. Okay, so let's maybe get into the proof. So I wanna notice that first of all, by just relabeling of M and L, we may assume that our angle theta is on the interval minus pi over two to pi over two, where we do not include minus pi over two, but we do include pi over two. But for the purposes of this proof, I am also going to not include pi over two and leave that part for homework. So let's maybe just note that here, theta equals pi over two, in other words, 90 degrees. You guys can work that out on your own. I think it's a fairly straightforward after seeing this proof. Okay, so now let's maybe get a sketch of the situation. So let's start with our intersection point. So that's point P. And so that point is on line L and line M. So let's maybe put line L like this. So we'll just note that this is gonna be line L. And then let's put line M like this. So this is line M. Okay, good. So now let's see what else we need. So we need a point A, which is not equal to P, that is on line L. So let's maybe put the point A right here. And then we need a point C on line M, which is not equal to P. So let's maybe point, put point C right there. And then notice by our setup here, this angle right here has measurement theta. So I'll just write that is measure theta. Okay, nice. So now let's see what we've got. We're going to look for a rotation of angle two theta based at point P. So let's maybe get another line in this picture that goes another angle theta from line M. So that would be right about there. And so let's point out that this has angle measure theta as well. And what we wanna show is that a rotation about P of angle two theta is the same thing as a double reflection, first across L and then across M. Okay, so let's see how we can do this. So we wanna consider the following isometry. So I'll call it phi, and it will be the composition of a reflection about M and a rotation about P of angle two theta. So we do the rotation first and then the reflection second. And what we will want to end up showing, so here let's put, we wanna show that phi is equal to sigma L. And notice if we get phi is equal to sigma L, then we can just left multiply by sigma M, that reflection about M, but reflections are their own inverses, and then that ends up with this equation right here, which is what we're going for. But now I wanna point out that an isometry is equal to a reflection if and only if it fixes two points on the line L. So that's a way to characterize reflections. Reflections are the only isometries 
that fix more than one point, and in fact, they fix infinitely many points, all the points on the line L. But the fact that they fix more than one means that we only need to show that this thing fixes two points. Okay, so let's maybe see how we could do that. Well, which two points are we gonna pick? Well, P would be a good choice for the first point. So let's calculate phi of P. And notice that phi of P will be sigma M rho P angle two theta of P. But any rotation that is about the point P applied to the point P will fix P. So that's just a rotation about this point right here. That point will obviously not go anywhere. So that means that's gonna be a reflection about the line M of the point P. But now because P is on the line M, that also fixes the point P. So we have found a single point so far that is fixed under our isometry, which is this composition, and that's a point P. So next up, we need to find another point. So let's pick another point, I'll call it capital X, and it's gonna be on the ray from P to A. So let's write it like this, so it's gonna be on the ray P A like this. So let's maybe put that somewhere. We'll say capital X is right here. So that's definitely on that ray. And then next what we'll do is define Y to be equal to the image of capital X under our rotation about P of angle two theta. So that's gonna be rho P two theta X. Okay, so let's maybe sketch where that is. So that's gonna follow this circular arc of an angle two theta to land right here at Y. Now we're gonna complete a line segment between X and Y, so I'll put it just like this exactly. And then next, we know that this line segment will intersect with the ray P to C. So that intersection point will be right here, I'll call that D. And now we can see that we have two triangles in this situation, this triangle right here and this triangle right here, and we can notice that they are congruent. So why are they congruent? Well, first of all, they have the same angle here, and then this side is shared by each of them, so they have a same side length measure there. But then this distance from P to X is the same thing as this distance from P to Y, given that the only difference between X and Y is an isometry, and isometries fix distances. So in other words, PX is equal to PY. So in conclusion, by the side angle side, so it would be side angle side theorem, we have triangle PDX is congruent to triangle PDY. But with that setup, we know all of the angles are equal. So in fact, angle PDX is congruent to angle PDY. Oh, and while we're at it, shout out to anyone in Portland, Oregon. Back when I was on the job market, I always tried to apply to jobs in Portland because I really wanted to move there. Okay, so now that we've got this angle PDX is equal to angle PDY, that's this angle and this angle, and their sum is 180 degrees or pi radians, we see that that makes each of them a right angle. So we've got a right angle here and we have a right angle there. But that means they both have measure angle pi over two or 90 degrees. But what does that do? That means that this line M is the perpendicular bisector of XY. Well, we know that XD and DY are the same because they're in uh, congruent triangles. So let's go ahead and write that down. So we have M is the perpendicular bisector of this line segment XY. That tells us that Y is equal to sigma M of X. And that's by the definition of a reflection. So a reflection will take a point to the special other point in the plane so that the line we are reflecting through is the perpendicular bisector of the, that line segment defined by those two points. Okay, so now we have Y equals sigma M of X. And now we can check that phi of X is actually itself. 
So let's maybe go ahead and do that. So notice phi of x will be equal to sigma m of rho of p2 theta of x, but that's sigma m of y, but that is x. So that means we've got a second point, which is fixed by our isometry phi. But that means that we finished this want to show because phi was equal to sigma L if and only if it fixed two points on L. So let's see what we've got. Just to finish everything off right here, we have phi, which is equal to sigma L, is equal to sigma M and then rho P two theta. Now we can left multiply by sigma M. Reflections are their own inverses giving us sigma m sigma l equal rho p two theta, which is exactly what we wanted to end at. And that's a good place to stop.